In this tutorial, we'll discuss about the adverse drug reactions and uh, this discussion will include the definition of the adverse drug reactions, the classification of the adverse drug reactions and uh, the classification in our this discussion will be the Ryland thompson classification, Ryland thompson classification and according to this classification, we'll be talking about the type A reactions and type B reactions in detail. So what will be our criteria explaining type A and B reactions? We'll be telling people about the type A reaction, its other name, its definition, cause, subclasses, examples. So these examples we will be actually the clarify the type A reactions. And uh, here type B reactions will tell you people about the type B other name, the definition, the cause, the subclasses, example and means to this example we will actually clarify the type B reactions. So the criteria is actually the same for both the types of the reactions in our today's discussion. So let's start our discussion from the very first point that is the definition of the ADR. Adverse drug reactions according to WHO, these are the reactions that are actually noxious, unintended and occur at doses used in men for the prophylaxis, diagnosis and therapy. Means if you're taking the drug for the purpose like prophylaxis, diagnosis or therapy. In short, what is meant by this particular definition? If you are using the drug at normal doses and you encounter the harmful or unwanted reactions, this type of reactions are actually known as adverse drug reactions. That's it. Now let's come towards the classification of the adverse drug reactions. The classification that we are going to discuss is Rowland Thompson classification. According to this classification, we have two types type A and B reactions. First of all, let's clear the type A one. According to type A, it is also known as augmented type of the reaction. Now, what is meant by the word augmented? Augment means to increase a process, to speed up a process. So, what is going to happen? You will learn, you understand the meaning of this argument in the explanation. Let's come towards the explanation of the type A reactions. These are actually the consequence of the drugs normal pharmacological action. Now, what is meant by this particular sentence, particular statement? I'm taking a drug for a particular purpose. I want to treat that particular purpose. Suppose I'm taking insulin for maintaining the diabetes. What happens sometimes we see the adverse drug reaction like the hypoglycemia. Now, what is the main cause behind this? We're taking the drug. We know that this drug is going to cause the particular action. We're using the insulin to maintain the diabetes. Sometimes this insulin therapy results into hypoglycemia. Now, what is the cause behind? The main cause behind is we take the drug too much or for a longer period of time. So when we are taking the drug in large doses or for a longer period of time, we'll see actually type A reactions. So in short, what is the main cause that is actually incorrect dosage? Type A reactions are actually seen due to incorrect dosage. Now, before we move towards the subclasses, let us know uh, some points that first of all, here in this statement, we got that these reactions are due to the drugs pharmacological action means we know that particular drug is going to cause a particular action. So these type of the reactions are actually a kind of predictable. We can predict that this particular patient which has undergone a certain type of reaction is due to particular drug. So one can say in short that we were actually aware about the action of the drug. So you can say that type A reactions are actually predictable means they, they can easily be predicted and they are dose related. So here we told people that the main cause is incorrect dosage. We are using either too much or for a longer period of time. And the morbidity mortality regarding type A reactions are very low. And now let's come towards the next point that is the management. How will we manage type A reactions? Very simple. We will just adjust the dosage regarding type A. And regarding type B, we'll manage by means of stopping the particular drug. Then these type of reactions can be managed. Now let's come towards the subclasses. We have two subclasses of the type A reactions. Exaggerated desired drug effect undesired drug effect. You can use another term for this exaggerated desired drug effect that is excessive desired drug effect. Now what is mean by the term excessive desired drug effect? Suppose we are using the insulin to maintain the diabetes. Now our desire is to maintain the diabetes. Sometimes due to incorrect dosage what happens? Erection is seen hypoglycemia. Why? Because it means we took 
incorrect dosage due to which hypoglycemia occurred now this is actually a kind excessive desired drug effect undesired drug effect now let's come towards the second one that is undesired drug effect this is actually the lateral effect suppose we're using the chemotherapy to treat the cancer what happens we see lateral effect that is the loss of hair now this is actually undesirable drug effect so you can get two types of the effects that is exaggerated or excessive desired effect undesired drug effect this is undesired example the chemotherapy is example of the undesired drug effect and while insulin and hypoglycemia reaction is example of the excessive desired drug effect so here we got two subclasses excessive desired drug effect undesired drug effect now these two are actually the types of the the subclasses of the type a reactions so like this our type a reactions got complete okay. now let's come towards the type b reactions okay. noun is bizarre reactions now what is mean by the term bizarre unexpected or unpredictable reactions we don't know about about these type of the reactions example if you're taking a drug and this drug is having particular type of the action but you see another unexpected which is not noun so such kind of the reactions that are not noun for particular drug those reactions are actually noun is unexpected unpredictable reactions so due to these reasons they are dose independent means they are not depending upon the dose that you are taking for a particular treatment and they are having high morbidity plus high mortality now what is the main cause actually we have causes cause number one genetical number two immunological now these two are actually a, a kind subclasses of the type B reactions. According to genetical type, consider we are having a drug that is primaquine, chloroquine or sulfur drugs. If you are giving these drugs to a particular population, in that population all the patients are using the particular drug but only one person in that population experiences a type of the reaction that is known as hemolytic anemia. Now this reaction is because of a genetic defect. Now what is this genetic defect? Very simple. Just concentrate. We have an enzyme known as glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Now that particular person in the entire population is actually not having a specific gene to produce this particular enzyme due to which that person is experiencing the adverse drug reaction and the entire population is then safe from this adverse drug reaction. Now what is going to happen in this type of reactions? When G6PD is deficient in that particular person, that person is not producing inside the body this enzyme. When this enzyme is not produced, this enzyme is actually responsible to produce glutathione reductase and that is responsible to decrease the oxygen stress in the RBCs. So when these enzymes are not produced, what is going to happen then? then there will be no glutathione reductase production and if the glutathione reductase is not produced then the oxygen stress in the RBCs will not be maintained. So then the person if he is using the primaquine, chloroquine or being this antimalarial drug then that person will experience the hemolytic anemia. Why? Because these drugs like chloroquine, primaquine, these are actually responsible to precipitate, to increase the oxygen stress and they will destroy. You can say they will do the hemolysis. So that will result into a reaction known as hemolytic anemia. And these genetical reactions are actually known as idiosyncratic reactions. That's clear now. Now let's come towards the second one, immunological reactions. You know, hypersensitivity reactions, we have already discussed these reactions in our last videos of the hypersensitivity in which we discussed that the IgG, you can say immunoglobulins like type 1, 2, 3, they are responsible to function under the immunoglobulins. These immunoglobulins were responsible to release certain type of the mediators from the basophilic mast cells. Now, if you are taking another drug, those drugs are acting just like immunoglobulins. They are also responsible to release the certain type of the are the same type of the chemical mediators. Now these immunoglobulins like IgE, they were responsible to release the histidine, the histamine from the particular mass and basophil cells. And that uh, histamine was actually responsible to induce a specific type of the reaction. What happens if you're taking the drug like NSAID? This NSAID sometimes and some other drugs when you take, they are, they are acting the same just like the immunoglobulins IgE. They also cause the same type of release of the chemical mediators just like the IgE did. 
means just like the immunoglobulin did a certain type of release of certain chemicals this drug will also cause the release of certain type of the mediators just like IgE released from the mast or basophil cells then again those drugs will cause the same type or different type of the adverse drug reactions so in short the immunological reactions include hypersensitivity reactions and hyper susceptibility reactions like this our discussion becomes complete i hope you got the entire discussion and if still you have confusion anywhere please feel free to ask us in the comment box and thank you for watching